Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, this video is interesting. So <laughs> this video should have came out a while ago, but I just never got to it because I wanted this to be perfect, but it's not going to be perfect b before this video comes out. I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss the period where it's best to upload this video if I start uploading it when this is perfect. But essentially, I had to leave NixOS. I made a video about it, but I loved the fact that NixOS allowed me to make a reproducible configuration. Uh, this tool I made essentially adds that to any Linux distribution, and I'm aware that you can use Nix, like the Nix language, to make a reproducible configuration on any distribution, but it's all, it's all Nix. This tool I made essentially allows you to do that, but with the native technologies of the distribution. So, essentially what this tool does is uh, you have a configuration file, and you put all your packages in here. This is mainly for reproducing packages between systems, which is essentially all I needed in NixOS. It can do a little bit more than that because this tool I made does have hook support that you can like make a post build hook for installing flat pops, for example. So I can have a hook that runs at a specific time. So it's pretty powerful. I'm still working on the hook support to make it even more powerful too. Uh, I also want to add support for adding custom package managers and stuff. So I'm still working on this. And trust me, I, this isn't abandoned software. This is something I use daily, so I'm obviously going to make it good. Uh, so the way you use this program is once you install it. So the program, by the way, is called Rebos. Uh, it was formerly called Dister, but I wanted to upload it to crates.io, and Dister was taken, so I asked my community what a good name for the uh, program would be, and I called it Rebos, by the way, uh, Discord server down in the description. I've got like 110 members, and there's uh, 20 members online right now, as of now. Um, so, Rebos. If you just run the Rebos command, you get this uh, commands thing. I wrote this app in Rust, so I was able to use the clap framework, uh, the clap framework to make this absolutely gorgeous uh, commands thing. So, um, the way you use this is you set up the program. So, uh, what you do is if you don't have a configuration already, you run rebos init config. And I, I have a configuration already. Essentially what this is saying, that what this will do is if you have a configuration already, it will not overwrite it. But if like I added more files to the configuration, it will create those. So you can also update your configuration with this. So as you can see my configuration, nothing was overwritten. Um, there's also uh, the setup command. And this is uh, essentially, so uh, you have the way Rebos tracks changes is it uses generations. And the way it does that is for every new install of your system, you want to run Rebos setup. Uh, and you want you want to run Rebo setup. You never want to back up this file, and so that's like that's that's why this folder is stored in the home directory. I I couldn't find a good directory for it, is because I wanted to store it somewhere where you're never supposed to back it up, but you're also never supposed to delete it. Um, it's supposed to stay forever on that current installation. So, uh, you never want to rm. This, so you never want to delete this directory on your current installation, but you also never want to back it up. You want to create a new version of this for every installation. Um, I cannot emphasize that enough. So the reason this is, is because inside this directory, rebo base, you have this folder called generations. Inside of generations, this stores all your generations. And this essentially tracks diffs. So uh, like, for example, you can have a bash script that installs all your programs but that's only once, and it doesn't track changes, so it's also not able to uninstall programs very easily. Rebo solves that, so you can sync changes across multiple devices, and it will just work. So, uh, I can show you. Uh, Rebo, so for example, if I run Rebo gen, you can see all the subcommands for the gen command. And there's a lot, so there's committing, listing, cleaning duplicates, aligning, tidying up, uh, info, latest delete old, delete, diff, current, help. And I'll go over all of these. And help is just a clap thing. It just prints this out. Uh, so if I run that again, as you can see, 
so let's go over this. Uh, the commit command, so what you can do, the way you create a new generation, and by the way, so rebus gen list. Uh, these are my generations, and all of these generations here, here called sync are just whatever I call generations where I'm git pulling any changes from my other devices. Um, and they have commit messages and stuff. So, and it also tells me, like, this is the current one that was built, this is the current one that I'm focused on, so this is my, uh, latest focus generation. The reason this is, is because, uh, so, to build a newly created generation, so like to install the new programs and uninstall the old programs, uh, what you can do is rebos gen current build. And what this does is it builds the current generation and sets it to build. And current is its own subcommand that I'll also go over. There's a lot of subcommands. I was having fun with clap. Um, so, all right, B let's actually get into installing programs. So I can go into my config and the way you set this up, there is some setup to do. Uh, the first thing you'll have to do is configure your package manager. So if I hxpkg underscore manager dot toml, you can see that I have some configuration options in here. So I'll go over these. So in here, this uh, this like uh, dollar sign colon question mark, this gets replaced with packages. So it's literally a find and replace, it, nothing special. So uh, for example, this, if I was installing git, this would become paru-s git. Uh, same here, Sa same with all of these. Um, and then this config many pkg args, what this is, is I wanted to make this compatible with any package manager. And I know some package managers, though not usually, some package managers only support one package argument, so I wanted to support that. So what this does is uh, essentially, if you have this set to true, what it will do is it will um, install all your new uh, packages like git, neo, fetch, btop, etc. Uh, if you set this to false, it will it will uh, split it into many package operations so like paru-s neo fetch and paru-s btop. So it will do one package per command instead of stuffing all the packages into one command. Um, so yeah, that's all that option does. Uh, and so, all right. Now, if you want to add packages, what you can do is inside of gen.toml, if you want this to be global, so like all your machines get these packages, you add them to gen.toml, but Rebos also has support for machine specific uh, packages. And the way you add that is inside of uh, machines, your host name, so Colossus, and then that gen.toml, you can add those machine specific packages. Um, and you can also, for example, specify, like I have Colossus, which is my desktop, an absolute insane beast. Uh, I have my laptop, which is a System76 Pangolin. It can handle pretty heavy programs too. So Colossus and Pongo can both handle he heavy programs. But I also have this uh, tiny $200, uh, $200 laptop, which I actually do use quite a bit. And it's, uh, an, an, it's an HP Stream 11, and it has an Intel Celeron in it, so it cannot handle things like Blender. It Well, it can handle things like Blender, it's just very slow. So uh, I also added an imports feature where you have this directory called imports, and inside of imports, you have these other .toml uh, files. And you can also create other directories in here and put more .toml files in those directories. And essentially the way that imports work is in your gen.toml, uh, you can have this imports field right here, and uh, you specify the import. And the way you do this is you leave off .toml, and you uh, and the root directory of this, so the directory it's going to be focused on, is the imports directory. So, like for example, um, I have a programming languages .toml file here, uh, so it will automatically for me specify imports and then add .toml on the end. Um, it's that simple, nothing fancy here. Uh, but there's also a directory called programming languages. So like, for example, that holds more things like rust.toml. So like I can specify ru uh, rust.toml if I wanted to, uh, or actually just rust, because .toml is implicit. It's uh, 
implied. So that's uh, imports. It's very simple. It only took me like an hour to implement, and the hour was spent getting recursion to work correctly. Um, and so to add packages, you just edit gen.toml, add your packages here. And the cool part is these are passed literally to the package manager. So you can also specify specific versions. So for example, I don't know how Pacman or Paru specifies versions, but for example, um, if, if Paru specifies versions with like Paru-s git equals 1.0 like this, uh, all you have to do to make this uh, work in Rebus is literally just specify uh, like, um, literally just specify git 1.0. It's that simple. And this gets passed literally as a package argument. Uh, so it's very simple. Sometimes simple is better. Um, and once you add your packages, the way you build this generation is you uh, run rebos gen commit, and then the commit message for that generation uh, so like um, commit message, you press enter, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to create another generation. And then you can rebos and then just verify that that new generation is the current generation with rebos gen list and it should be current. Um, and like the built generation will be something else, uh, like back here. Um, and then to build it, you do rebos gen current build. And what this will do is it will calculate the diff between your built generation and your current generation. It will execute commands based on those diffs, and then it will set the current generation to be built. Um, it's super simple, super clean, super convenient. Um, and this also allows you to, quote, roll back, end quote. So, like, for example, I could set a generation 5 here as the current, and then I could do rebos gen current build, and it will... Uh, go backwards and delete everything that was added uh, after that point because it just calculates the diff but the diff is in reverse and I can show you so um, if I go back to the sub commands for rebos gen there's all these commands like for example we covered commit and list there's also cleaned up so this just cleans duplicate generations and then the align command just like for example if there's a gap like 1 4 22 35 it sets them to 1 2 3 4 so it just aligns them back up um, and then tidy up runs uh, cleaned ups and align so it just does both of them in one command and also shows statistics so like rebos gen tidy dash up you can see deleted zero duplicate generations align zero uh, zero generations um, and then we have info this shows the info of the uh, gen dot tunnel uh, so like this so it shows me okay and this also takes into account uh, so this merges everything. So like it takes into account imports and machine specific packages as well. So we can see that like you'll see some GPU drivers in here for the AMD Radeon and whatnot uh, have flat packs and crates. Uh, it just essentially just shows information about the configuration file. Um, and then we have latest. Uh, this prints out the number of the latest generation. So if I run rebos gen latest, um, it shows me, okay, my, la my latest generation is nine. Um, and then we also have uh, rebos gen uh, delete old. What this does is um, rebos gen list. What this does is I specify a number and it deletes the first uh, generations like that number. So like if I wanted to delete these first four here, I would do rebos gen delete uh, old four and it will skip over current and built because you need those so it will skip over any current and built generations uh, so like you could do a thousand and it will automatically keep this last generation right here because it's current and built um, so I'll delete the first four generations and as you can see deleted generation one generation two generation three and generation four and now if I rebos gen list you can see that these aren't aligned. The way you align this is with the rebos gen align. It will align all the generations. So if I rebos gen list again, you'll see they're all aligned as normal. And um, so, all right, they're all aligned. And I will go back to subcommands. So 
uh, align, tidy up, info, latest, delete old, delete. This is delete will allow you to delete a specific generation. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Now the diff command. Uh, you pass in two generations and it will calculate the diff. So for example, uh, what is the diff between four and five? Um, Rebos gen diff uh, four and five. So the fifth generation is adding logism, as I can see by the commit message. So it will show me like going from br from bless hex editor to logism. What it's doing is it's adding logism, and I can also do this in reverse. So like uh, instead of four and five, I can do five and four. And as you can see, deleting logism. Um, so this can be very useful if you want to see diffs. And this is also how I delete duplicates as I calculate the diff, and if the diff is zero, I delete the uh, older one. Uh, and then we also have current, again, this is uh, just uh, showing what the uh, current, th this is subcommands for the current generation, so I can also show those, rebos gen current. Uh, we have build, we have rollback, so this is how like you can set um, the current back a little bit so like I can show you uh, here is my uh, current generation list I can do rebos gen current rollback uh, 2 this will roll back uh, by two generations and if I do uh, rebos gen list you'll see that current is now this so if I run rebos gen current build it will run all the way back here so it will delete logism it will delete the bless hex editor and it will set built to this right here and if I wanted to undo those changes, I could set current to the logism one and then uh, run rebos gen current build again. And that's actually easy to do with the two dash latest command. So uh, if I wanted to go back to logism here, I could just do rebos gen uh, current two dash latest. And what this will do is it will set to the latest. P pretty self explanatory. And then we also have. Um, the set command this just sets to current to a specific generation pretty self-explanatory and uh that should be it for rebos other than hooks so gen setup in it and then we also have api this is just for like scripting if you want to integrate into the thing so rebos api you can see i've got echo echo generic and help the way this works is like for example rebos api echo um i pass in the log modes so like echo um uh, task, for example, and then hello world, and task is not valid, so it's actually to do. So, um, as you can see, it uh, prints it in the native rebos logging um, syntax thing. So I can also do like error uh, fatal, etc., etc. Um, so this is useful for like hooks and stuff if you want to have native printing. Uh, there's also echo generic, and this is just the same thing, but um, with the generic output, this is also used in rebos. It's like that. This is used for like printing entries and stuff. So like the rebos gen info command, you can see that that generic is being used here. Um, yeah, so that's um, it other than hooks. So now let's actually cover hooks. So in the rebos um, configuration, there's this directory called hooks. And hooks, and I'll also have to write a wiki entry on the rebos wiki for this. I haven't yet, because hooks I'm not quite happy with, but it's getting there. So in hooks, uh, you can have things like pre underscore build, post underscore build, pre underscore crates, uh, pre underscore build, underscore crates, post uh, underscore build underscore crates packages flat packs etc inside of this you can just put put whatever you want I left an extension off of it so you could like for example uh, write it in Python or bash or whatever so like for example I'm using bash here and I'm just doing some stuff here so like for example I also reproduce my environment uh, variable file with rebos and my sddm configuration I'm also doing some other things like if I have uh, if I have firewall d installed I will disable firewall d remove firewall d install ufw and enable ufw uh, if i have vert manager installed i do some vert manager setup stuff um i enable uh, libvert d i make the uh, default network auto start so just simple stuff like this uh, in my post build but it's really useful and versatile
And that's it for Rebos. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick look at this tool I made. I use it every day. Uh, it makes me not want to go back to NixOS because I don't need all the crazy reproducibility. I just need package reproducibility. So um, time for the outro. <laughs> I don't do intros or outros, but essentially leave a like if you find found this useful. Maybe consider subscribing if you like Linux and programming content. Um, uh, join my Discord server if you want to chat with me or other people in there. Um, view my GitLab. Uh, you can find all my links, actually, at my website, oglo.dev, O-G-L-O dot D-E-V. And um, the CSS is very broken. I have to rewrite my website, make it nicer. But you can find my GitLab repos here, uh, Codeberg repos. This is sort of outdated. I don't really use Codeberg anymore. My YouTube channel, Odyssey channel, which I don't use Odyssey anymore because of recent changes they made. My Discord server, Matrix server, which I don't really use. Revolt server, which I don't really use. And tutorials. This is just stuff like setting up sysrq, which you should actually do. This is a good idea, so you should read this. Um, so yeah, I will see you all next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know this was kind of a rambly video, but I hope it helped, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.